I was born in 1956 in a village called Mewani and uh, when I was born that time my mom was not married then but after some time my mom was married and I had to move with my mom to uh, where she was married in other words to my stepfather so my journey starts there um, it appeared that my father, stepfather, did not like me and there was a pull and push here and there, uh, disagreements and so because of this I had again to go back to my grandparents to stay with them. I did stay with my grandparents and as I was growing uh, we were so great friends with my grandfather and we became so close such that even when he went drinking in the village, I would always accompany him. When he went to look, uh, to look after those uh, boys he had employed to keep cows, we went together. You know, my grandfather liked bathing. My stepfather liked bathing me. So they, to put water in the basin, and then when I've uh, removed my clothes, he would be put my head into that basin in the water and he would hold me there. I would struggle out and finally let me out. And again he would put me so I never liked hearing that he was going to bathe me because I knew what I was going to go through. And so this trouble went on and as I grew up it came a time when I was in primary of course now this time he wasn't bathing me I would do things for myself. But then he started telling me, when I come back from work, I don't want to find you here. So he tells me, you go home. Go to your home. And then I would go asking my mom, where is my home? Then my mom says, what are you asking me? Your home is here. This is where your home is. And so I went on for some time with this kind of uh, feelings. I'm being told to go to my home. And surely I would tell this was not my home. Why? Because there was this struggle. My father would hit me, would do those nasty things. But later, as I grew up, I started now defending myself. You would send me to go do this, how would you do it? And of course I was so obedient, I would do everything exactly how it was. Well, some of these things my mom didn't know. But then the question is, is so, she saw all the treatments, mistreatments. And I believe she knew there was trouble, there was problem. And I also want to believe that they were disagreeing many things regarding me. So anyway, as time went on, here I am in primary school and uh, then it comes a time early in the morning I would be waked, uh, he would wake me at 3 p.m. and you know those times there were animals in the forest and 3 a.m. in the night that is uh, towards morning I would be taken out into the bush to look after oxen you know, this preparing oxen to eat, then in the morning we go plowing. And this really scared me to death because I knew uh, a lion or uh, a tiger or those animals would come out. The trouble went on and it so happened that again. My mom though advocated for me. You find that Weekends, when we are not in school, I'm the person to look after cows. Um, when there is a holiday, the holidays that we loved so much because that time, you see, you would go to church and have so many presents. That time, I would be the person going to look after cows. But time went on with this till uh, when I was a uh, grown up. Uh, at standard five, my mom thought it was wise to send me to stay with my, uh, my, st my 
my auntie. Mwaka wa 1994 nilianza kuwa na ugua ninapatwa na homa kali na kupatwa na, na chest infection na nikachunguzwa na nikaambiwa sina shida ambazo walikuwa nafikiria niko nazo yani ugonjwa wa saratani ambao ilikuwa inasemekana ni ugonjwa wa ni throat cancer na wakati huo mimi niliendelea na kazi zangu tangu wakati huo mpaka nikapata nafasi ya kwenda kusomea ngambo na hii ilikuwa mwaka wa 1 eh, eh, mwezi wa Septemba nikatoka nikaenda ngambo kufika ngambo shida zangu zikaendelea na baada ya muda nikaanza kuchunguzwa na madaktari na mwaka wa 1 moja Disemba nikaambiwa msamativo uko na ugonjwa wa saratani na kutoka hapo shida zikaendelea nikawa nika na mazungumzo na madaktari wakanielezea wakaleta hata kansala wakanisumuzea kwa muda bibi yako yangu naye wakamwita wakamsumuzia na nikaanza matibabu nikapata chemotherapy baada ya chemotherapy niliuzishwa na what na cancer uh, support foundation ambayo ilikuwa inaitwa Liverpool Makimila ni Kanza Support Group na hao wakawa very instrumental to me na tukaanza kuwa na mikutano tulikuwa tunakutana once a month tunapokutana tunakuwa na madaktari wanatusumzia wanatuelezea jinsi ya mambo ya ulaji na jinsi ambavyo tunastahili kujitunza na kipindi hiki pia uh, naye bibi yangu akaanza kuchunguza ni nini ambacho angeweza kufanya kusudi nipate eh, kujenga immune ya mwili wangu na niwakumbusha kwamba daktari alikuwa ameniambia baada ya miaka miwili ugonjwa huo utarudi na utakuwa mbaya na pengine sasa huo ndio unatamaliza istoshe bibi yangu akawa hakubali jambo hilo akaambia daktari daktari hakuna mtu mwingine ambaye ameshakaa zaidi ya miaka miwili na nusu baada ya kuwa diagnosed na kansa diposa daktari akamwambia ninajua kuna watu eh, wengine kuna mtu hasa mmoja ambao ako katika record zetu ambaye amekaa miaka tisa bibi yangu akasema ah kama ni hivyo naamini hata naye bwana yangu ataweza kuishi miaka hiyo tisa na saidi na hapo ndipo tukaanza eh, mikakati ya kuweza kutafuta ni jinsi gani naweza kukula chakula kitakachoniweza kunisaidia eh, ndipo niweze kujenga immune yangu kipindi hiki nilikuwa nimemaliza kupata eh, chemotherapy na pia nikapewa eh, blood stem transplant ambayo ilikuwa inaisha eh, September mwaka huu eh, wa 2022 na safari sasa ya kuanza kupona ikaanza nilikuwa niko very weak nilikuwa bedridden na kazi ambayo bibi yangu alifanya kuweza kunilisha ikanisaidia pole pole pia na mawaidha ya madaktari mpaka nikaweza hata kuweza kujitoa kwa kitanda na hata kwenda kwa bafu kuoga nikaanza kupasa eh, nikaanza kuwa eh, kwenda kutembea na watoto wangu wananitoa nje tunazunguka kwa street tunarudi kwa nyumba yani nipate exercise huku bibi yangu naye akawa nafanya juicing ya greens juicing ya ya carrots juicing ya vitu kama parsley coriander hizo mchanganyiko huo na kula greens kwa wingi na kula mambo me, e, chakula kingine kama maharagwe vyakula vya namna hiyo na nikaendelea hivyo nikapata nguvu na nikawa pia tunapoenda kwa mawaidha tunaelezewa ni jinsi gani tunaweza kula vyakula ambavyo vitajenga mwili mwaka wa elfu 
e, F2 na kumi na saba nikaja hapa Kenya kutoka huko ngambo nilikokuwa nimeenda kwa masomo na nikawaangalia marafiki zangu ambao walikuwa nasumbuka nikakumbuka usaidizi ambao nimepata huko ngambo na nikaona ni jambo nzuri kuweza kuwatembelea marafiki zangu kuwasumuzia tukiwa na bibi yangu kwa sababu naye tulikuwa tumeenda safari hii pamoja hapo ndipo tukaona tulikuwa msaada kwa hawa wagonjwa marafiki na hata wengine family members wakaanza kupona wengine wanapata nguvu wanaendelea vizuri kutoka hapo tukaona ni vizuri tutafute mbinu zingine za kuweza kuwa na support group kama jinsi ambavyo tulikuwa nayo huko ngambo na mwaka wa mbili na kumi na nane tukaanza mwezi kama watano hivi kuwa tunakutanika mahali Nairobi katika medical center ya Sembidi Adventist tukiwa kikundi cha wagonjwa wa kansa usiogope na tena unapoambiwa uko na ugonjwa huo usikimbilie kwenda kwa kwa kwa, kemi, kwa chemotherapy straight away hebu muulize daktari daktari ni chemotherapy aina gani ziko daktari naweza kuzungumza na ndugu zangu naweza kuzungumza na wazazi wangu naweza kuzungumza na wale wanatoka nyu. kwa maana unapoenda kuzungumza na watu hao ile hofu ambayo uko nayo uoga ambao uko nao utaanza kwenda pole pole na ukija kuanza kutumia chemotherapy hiyo utakuwa tayari umeanza kujenga immune yako maana hauna shi, hauna ule uoga lakini ukienda kuchukua chemotherapy ukiwa na uoga ujue sasa hapo shida moja unaona tu kifo 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 kinabisha lakini kama umejua madhara ambayo yako kwa hii dawa na umejua kupitia kwa madawa fulani utaweza kupigana nayo utaingia na utaweza kufanya hivyo kwa hivyo ningependa msikilizaji ujue ya kwamba kanza sio kifo hivyo tunavyohesabu kanza ni ugonjwa kama mwingine wote na kanza eh, ikipatikana wakati unaofaa inaweza kutibiwa